There we go. Advanced. Mono. Good. Okay. I don't know why I have my headset on. Whatever. Alrighty. I was like, I, I don't know why I put my headset in. I'm like, I'm gonna play a video game. We don't have sounds in Marvelous Designer. <laughs> Alrighty, so today I do have shoes. We'll probably we'll at least do one pair. If not, I have I have a plan for how fast I go for the second pair. <laughs> so it will either be a detailed shoe or a very simple shoe. But I will have to put the caveat in about shoes and Marvelous Designer. I know a lot of people have asked for live streams about shoes, so I finally am doing it. Oh, let me grab my cheat sheet. Okay. Uh, there it is. I have too many windows open. So many tabs, so little time. Okay, moving all of the chats so that I can moderate if needed. All right, so this is gonna be the last one before the holiday. And then we'll be back. Yes, happy holidays, everybody. Oh. Okay. My tiny little void cat is running around. And I lost her. Alrighty. So we will start the stream at about five minutes in to the top of the hour here. And I need to remember that there is a 30 second lag. Mute my stuff. Interesting. All right. So, okay, my tiny void is our is has gone to bed. So that's that's good. So we're gonna start with shoes today. I'm gonna do a women's high heel. Um, I'm gonna explain something about shoes and marvelous designer, which we do get some support requests about. Um, and I'm basically gonna be making shoes a little bit the hard way. R 
basically patterning them, at least one of them from scratch. I patterned one the other day um, that I'm going to be referencing here just so you guys have a finished shoe at the end of the stream to see. But um, this time around, it's it's. I'd almost recommend making shoes outside of Marvelous Designer, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, on your avatar, on your custom avatar, and then animating that. But I will do the full spiel about that in a bit. You can doesn't mean it's always going to be easy to make shoes in Marvelous Designer. Um, all right. Four minutes. Oh, no. One more minute, and then I will do my spiel that we all know well. All of my regulars on the stream know it a little, a little too well. Hi, Fred. It's really funny how I'm my, I'm, I'm watching all three chats and I'm seeing which one's faster. And it looks like Restream is still a little bit faster than even YouTube. And this time we don't have any errors today, so yay. <laughs> all right, so let's get started. It is now 12.05 for me. So hello everybody, I am Megan and I work for Marvelous Designer as a 3D designer, community manager, um, Discord mom half the time, um, and I appreciate every one of you in our Discord channel. Um, I believe in the chat we might, we have Michelle who's going to be helping me moderate just in case, um, but today's going to be a pretty hard, easy but also difficult day, uh, making shoes. Um, so we're going to see how that's going to go. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with our links. So I'm posting them in the chat. For those of you who are not aware, we do have an official Marvelous Designer Discord, which I have linked an invite that should be working for everybody. There you can talk with other users of Marvelous Designer, especially if we're not on, like, we're not online. You can always speak to other users who are currently working on projects, get feedback, share your work. And we currently have a contest running as well for the, um kind of winter fairy tale themed holiday, uh, winter fairy tale themed contest, which you can win some pretty cool prizes. So check it out on our Discord channel. And I have also linked our website in the chat. So for those of you in the future who are asking what software I'm using, I'm using Marvelous Designer software. The software is called Marvelous Designer. You can get our software at MarvelousDesigner.com. And there's also where you can join our forum and do the same thing that you can do in our Discord channels. And as well as you can get a free 30 day subscription or three 30 day trial to Marvelous Designer. And it is a sub subscription based service after that. Um, but again, the software I will be using exclusively is Marvelous Designer for those of you who are in the future. And for those of you who are on Twitch, we do let the Twitch expire after the 14 days. But we are also streaming this to YouTube at the same time. So you can also join our check out our YouTube channel where we also have our YouTube tutorials and our streams will be kept on our YouTube channel as well. So for those of you who are new to Marvelous Designer, I do recommend you start off with our beginner tutorials just to become familiar with the software. I know a lot of a lot of everyone, including me, I go too fast sometimes, likes to run before you can walk. But a lot of the time with Marvelous Designer, especially because it is a human scale relative software, we do recommend you at least go through some of our beginner tutorials just so you can understand the basics because it is a little bit different than most um, other 3D softwares. And last but not le least, if you are having technical difficulties with your account, with your software, if you or if you think you might have found a bug, feel free to let us know at marvelousdesigner.com slash support slash contact. It's going to be a little bit faster than if you did it through the Marvelous Designer support email because that way we have a ticket with your account information already because you would be logged in to create that support ticket. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me open up OBS again. Oh yeah, we've we've added that expiration wave. No! Well, I guess I'm just gonna stay there because I guess it expires. I, I give my, my stuff expires in September of next year. <laughs> the, the updates happen, so you'll see that update in the corner. Uh, but that is all of our links. So let's get started with shoes. I did work on some shoes a bit ago. So first of all, we do get a lot of requests about adding shoes to an to the avatar file here. 
Now, because our sister software is Clo3D, Clo3D, you can assign shoes as an OBJ, or you can assign shoes as a ZACS file. Marvelous Designer, you cannot do this. So we're going to be making these from scratch and then exporting them as an OBJ at the end and bringing them in. I would, this is why I would say to most Marvelous Designer users, most of you are going to be making shoes either in Marvelous Designer if you wanted, or you can be sculpting them yourself. But you cannot assign shoes in Marvelous Designer. You can only do it in Clo. So there has been some confusion with that, but that is unfortunately how it works right now. We do not give you the option because most of the time, most users aren't gonna be asking for it because you're gonna be making your shoes and your avatars outside of Clo, or outside of Marvelous Designer. But if you wanted to make shoes in Marvelous Designer, here's how you can do it. Because we have asked, we have had a lot of people asking about it. So I've imported an avatar and I have just selected high heel shoes. You can change out the shoes if you want. Uh, number one, I realize these shoes don't actually fit and her heel would fall right out, but you know what? That's fine. So first things first is I'm gonna close this. Once you have the shoe height that you like, you can remove just one of the shoes and it looks really wonky. That's just how it's gonna look. If you want to create, specifically create an even more customized shoe, you can delete both shoes and then turn on the x-ray joints for your avatar. Select it for the heel, select um, symmetrically length one, uh, heel here, and then you can specifically shape the feet into the way that you want the shoe to be. You can see she's going through the floor. This I'm not going to be doing this, so I'm just going to be copying the shoe, but if you want to do it this way, you totally can. And then right click your avatar, move avatar to ground, and it'll bring her back up. And I'm just going to turn this back off so you can see. So if I wanted my sh heels to look like this and have this specific shape, I could do that, or I could make them smaller kitten heels and decrease the height. Now, something interesting does happen, which I have reported. Uh, let's just say you want to change it up and you actually just want to add shoes after you've moved your avatar's feet. Just select that avatar, or I'm just going to select shoes, those heels. Now, because I've moved her to the ground super high up, it does warp my shoes a bit. So to fix this, all I have to do is center ground and wait, which one did, was it? Move her to the center, reset joints, there we go. Because I warped the joints myself, I needed to reset the joints. And of course, center her back to the ground. To the ground, just to make sure. So, now that I've done that shoe, I am going to go ahead and delete just the shoe. Just the one, so I can have this one standing up still. So there's a couple of ways to do this, and to make these shoes. Our avatars are... Again, you can't change the toe box on the shoe or on the foot. A lot of shoes uh, nowadays actually will warp the shape of the foot, but again, our avatars are rigid. We cannot warp these avatars, so we have to kind of work around the shape of the foot. So keep that in mind while you're working. You can find some patterns, so I did find some patterns um, for shoes. Here's an example. Here's an ice skating shoe. I can do this a bit later if we want, but, or next, probably, or maybe next stream if we want some more different types of shoes, but I'm doing a basic women's heel for today and then hopefully a men's shoe just so we can have some basics down for everybody. You can see here that the toe box gets quite wide on the other sides of the shoe. And then we also have, if we just look at the silhouette of this shoe, eh, rotate around. It doesn't warp as much as other shoes might. Sorry, we're looking at it from below. So we will be making another basic women's shoe here. So uh, add background image. So I just end up finding a shoe sole first. Um... I'm going to be using the one that actually fits my avatar just because I can. Um, 
I don't know what size this is going to be, so this is going to be a problem. A lot of the time it's going to require a lot of um, working, working with the shape and the scale, but we only have two hours and I'm trying to do two, so we're going to do it the little bit easy way. And this was a screenshot from my other project, so I've uh, brought that in. Wow! So lucky. I did help myself out by making a 12.5 um, millimeter square to reference. And so clicking on my avatar so I can rotate around her properly. So first of all, we're going to be making the bottom of the shoe. So it's going to be the shape of this heel bottom. These avatars, these shoes aren't going to truly fit. Just so you guys all know, this avatar cannot, like, if she were to really actually walk in this shoe, it would probably fall off of her foot because it's made of cloth and mesh. So basically, you'll see me do it with the men's shoe, hopefully. You just bring in a photo of the bottom of a shoe, any kind of shoe that you want to create. This one is a pointed heel. As you can see, and I'll show you how to fit this to the foot of these avatars. You can use the same concepts for your own custom made avatars if you want to do it this way. Or honestly, you could also just sculpt your avatars, your shoes on your avatars. Hover transparent. And making the heel. Split in half, just so I know where the center back of the shoe is. Where are we at? And I like to start with these shoes. I'm going to make them five particle distance immediately. There are a couple different ways. I've also seen users uh, place the fabric on the bottom and then just shape it out by making the fabric transparent. That method also works. Uh, wrong shoe. Right click. Flip vertically. There we go. And let that settle. And then I'm going to put the heel up to her heel. Now this works really well if you actually have a very, if you have a lot of knowledge of shoemaking, you can easily do it this way. But it is relatively difficult to find anything, I will say. Uh, flip horizontally again. Or flip vertically in this case. Okay. No, I want this back actually. Flip vertically. There we go. And then I'm just going to flip the normal bob. I'm just going to go ahead and freeze this piece and then sew them to each other. I'm just going to rotate this in my window. Okay and strengthen them both. Reverse sewing before I accidentally make that mistake. Reverse sewing. Uh, 
All right, there we go. Oh, I wish I could delete that. Uh, okay, sorry about that. We had some unwanted spam. So here's the beginning of her shoe. You can see the most important portion of this is to make sure that it fits at the very least the widest part of the toe. It can bend a little bit around the toe and that's fine, but it will help to fit it as close as you can diagonally across. And because this is going to be that bottom sole portion, this is going to be a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna make this three millimeters and then turn on thick textured surface so we can see it. So it's still a little curved, which I don't want. So I'm gonna reduce the curved side geometry so we have that square shape. Okay. And I'm going to take advantage of partial, partial freeze. So I'm just gonna be using the select mesh box and then partial freeze this after I, I have to unfreeze it first. unfreeze and then before I do anything else partial freeze and then I can get my nicer curve there just because it looks nice and back to thick textured surface, and then I'm just gonna check it again. Make sure the position is good, because ideally I'm gonna freeze this in place. Because we're not making a real shoe. So I'm gonna go ahead and freeze it. And so now here's where you can basically start creating your boot or your heel. Um, I can create, I'm gonna create the toe box first and then decide I'm going to create the shoe portion first and move this out of the way. So you can try to draw on the avatar, but I will say with our avatars, I'm going to turn on the mesh so you can see it. It is a pretty, it's a pretty dense mesh and we do have the toes. So it would be best to just basically create a sock and then cut that sock apart. Or you can just kind of follow this image. I can provide it for everybody. Um, you can look at a photo of a woman's heel pattern, which this is from. Okay. Uh, got some fun spam today. Block user. Okay. Let me grab a heel pattern just so you all can see. Because you can sometimes find some heel patterns on YouTube. Here's another example, just for the sake of learning. You can utilize this base heel as a reference. You can also use these. So this would be the inner side. The inner side is a bit smaller than the exterior. Just keep that in mind. And this is the toe. This is the tongue, basically, right here. So you can find some shoe patterns. But just keep in mind, you do need to customize them for your avatar, especially because a lot of the time shoe patterns fit against the foot here and then they just remove all of the excess. So you can see a bunch of different patterns, <laughs> Cinderella shoe. Um, but yeah, you can find patterns on Google. Just type in a uh, women's heel pattern or women's high heel shoe pattern. You can look up shoemaking tutorials. Um, I do have some for menswear. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And we'll make it go back 
to texture service. So this way I'm just doing a super basic shape here with a toe box and with the two sides. I do want to make this point much more curved, so I am going to use the smooth curve tool and I'm just going to make this a little bit less pointy, much like I did here. And then I'm going to finish tracing this. It's really ugly, <laughs> so we're going to have to do some cleanup. But it's a good base to just get us started with. And here I have some darts. No matter what you you have with your shoes, you're going to have to include darts if you are not sculpting your shoe. Oftentimes leather shoes are heat sculpted or heat shaped. Uh, ooh, bezier curves. Okay. Why am I here with bezier curves today? I literally don't work with them. Um, a lot of the time they're going to be heat sculpted much like hats so that will stretch over a hat block. And the same thing goes with shoes, especially leather shoes. So do just keep that in mind that you're probably going to end up doing some more uh, sculpting at the end. And here I'm trying to add as few curve points or a few uh, points as I can. And I'm just using curve points here. And I'm just using the curve point tool to edit and also add. Convert to curve point. You can see where the actual heel starts on my shoe here based on the severity of this curve change. And you can see that I do add elastic, an elastic value to it. Because again, I can't shape the leather like I would in real life, in real shoemaking. We are cheating it this way. And symmetrically sewing. I will have to remove the linked symmetry in a while because one side is going to be a little bit larger than the other. But this is going to help us get started making this shoe. I need to change this fabric preset to full grain leather. Oops. Preset custom trim full grain leather. Because this is what these heels would be made of. Or, you know, plastic. And then sewing the heel, the back of the heel to itself before placing it. I can also go ahead and get us started a little bit here. We'll place it around the foot before I apply it so we can all kind of see the shape that it's going to start. Another way to create the shape is to just put rectangles to the side of your shoe and then collide them with each other and then kind of start shaping it how you want. But you do need to remember to eventually account for turn of cloth over your avatar, much like how we talk about um, armholes and making sure that your armholes actually account for the body thickness of your avatar. And then the toe box. There will always be a left and a right side. Before I do anything else, these all need to be five particle distance because luckily I'm working at a very small scale, so it doesn't cause me much problems to work at five particle distance. And sewing them. I'm just going to segment sew them in 3D. Oh, I crisscrossed my sewing there. making sure my notches match up. Okay. So starting from the back, I am going to do some free sewing across this heel. And it's going to be a little bit flipped, but that's fine. Oh, 
holding shift with my free sewing and then splitting the center front here split symmetrically Oop. split symmetrically uniform split I'm gonna do end to end free sewing yeah yes thank you okay There's that one. And then it's that is the exterior of the foot. Oh, did I swap out? I did. Fine. Let's do it the easy way. From the tip to the edge. So this is the exterior, just so we remember looking at it. Of the foot and then sewing the exterior. See, this is a little bit off, that is fine because I'm going to end up stretching it. The toe box. So let's go ahead and strengthen all of these. And then we'll simulate it before I do any fixes. So we're already looking pretty good. I do have some cleanup to do, but you can see this needs to be fixed a little bit. So let's use the edit sewing tool. I'm gonna just pull this portion forward. And, or pull it back. Let's see which one looks better. Most likely it's not going to make much of a difference. Same with this interior piece or this exterior piece. There we go. Let's see. Yes, in Marvelous Designer, you can use the uh, draw on avatar tool to um, draw your patterns on the body and then flatten them. Yes. So this does happen sometimes when you're working with frozen objects. So you can see there's a little pleat that's formed here that's causing this to ripple. So I have to then kind of fix it a little bit by deactivating sewing and patterning. I'm going to hide them. Re-simulate, re freeze, and then unhide these pieces again. There we go. And that fixed up my little problem. So you can see that this doesn't fit on her foot. And if I was to, if I wasn't careful, these would probably fall down. So to adjust for this and to account for it, just to make my life easier, I do like to go to both static friction and kinetic friction, and I make them value of one because I just don't want them moving. Ooh, control H. There we go. And it's going to kind of form around the foot and it does also make it easier to hold it onto the foot. Now this is full grain leather. I am simulating it like leather. I do have some cleanup to do as you can see. But that is fine. You can also see that I have a little pucker there. What are you doing? What are we doing here? Is that from my bad patterning? It is from my bad patterning. Let's fix that. So we have this little pucker that I definitely don't want there, so I'm going to fix it before I do anything else. Uh, rotate parallel to 
these par lines are parallel now. And now I'm going to go ahead and fix this. I hate Bezier curves. Why did I do this? I'm just going to cry. Okay, there we go. And I also want this to be thick. Make this all three. Give me thick textured surface. See, it's still not perfect. Um, but first we will add elastic value. Oh, this is not three as well. Make this three. Okay. Um, and only on the toe box, I'm going to add a little bit of pressure to hopefully shape it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do some more movement. And to also help that, I'm going to make my skin offset five. Nope. Okay. I don't like the five. I like it being less than five. One. All right. I have some things to fix. I can either make this thicker or I can increase the pressure. There we go. Looking better. Looking better. I do want to have this be curved outward if I have to. So I am going to make these darts curved. Because I can just delete the uh, 3D line rendering, which is fine. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. And I still will then add that elastic value just on the top for now. Uh, we're going to do 90 just for conversation's sake. There we go. And I do want to be able to see my heel. I am on thick textured surface and I can't see this. So I'm going to make them both thicker, I think. Just a little bit thicker. Hello, welcome. Okay, so you can see now that I've added that elastic value, it does help that shape. Um, you have a little bit of toe cleavage going on. Some people like it, some people don't. That is up to you as a designer. I do want to probably, I just want to try, I'm probably going to move this just a little bit. Um, deactivate. gonna move this just just a little bit just a little bit move okay and I do want that okay I'm gonna freeze it here that's a little bit better uh, how long do you think a person could master Marvelous Designer? Master? Uh, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, I this is honestly the third time I've made shoes. Um, most of the time, Marvelous Designer is not for making shoes. Um, and I've been working here for over almost three years now. So it depends on what you mean by master. But at the very least, it's going to take a hardcore couple of months to, uh, to learn how to utilize the program efficiently. Not really master, I would say. Because you're always learning. Because also shoe patterns are just absolutely not fun in my opinion, but that's just me. It seems like it'd be more fun to just sculpt this. Especially for our, our users. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this shape of this toe box. But obviously, as you can see, it, it takes a lot of uh, finessing and playing around with. Marvelous designer. And there we go. That's a little bit better. I really don't like that toe box. 
I know this is my base pattern, but like, that's a really ugly toe box. Tabby shoes. Yeah, I don't want to make tabby shoes right now. <laughs> I haven't patterned for those. Actually, tabby shoes look a lot easier than what I'm doing right now because you can utilize the shape of the foot. And if you make a sock, you just put a seam where the where the toe is. Yeah, those are a little bit easier. But you always want to start with the sole. Um, oh, there's chat. Uh -huh. Yeah, you want to start with the toes, like what Rosemary's saying. I want to adjust this one. I want to turn off the 3D. Rendering for the stitches. Eh, whatever. I'll leave it as it is. Now for the heel. So here's where I could just do a straight up um, wedge. So it's been actually going pretty good. So let's try to do two different heel types today. Just for this one. I'll do it two different methods because I have my other pattern planned out, but you could also do it this way too. Just colliding it in the center as much as you can. And then like what one of the users said, drawing directly on the avatar, you can do the same thing with the heel here, as I'm about to do, using the edit line tools and the draw line avatar tools. So here I'm just going to use the edit 3D pattern tool. I specifically pl placed this here so that I can just trace under the shoe. Holding control to make curve points. To follow as closely as I can to the shoe. I am making the heel. Of the wedge. And then I can use the edit line. Cut, because I'm not sewing anything to it. Deleting that upper portion. And now I have the shape of my heel. So here I can go ahead. Actually, I need to make this a little bit longer this way. There we go. Yes. I just need to know where it is on this heel. I do need to make a little reference line for myself on my pattern. So line 3D pattern. Just so I know which side. And then we can make a normal heel after this. Again, making this five particle distance. And now I need to calculate. Now I need to do math. That's not going to be perfect. That's fine. Because this is the shape of my heel now. So what I need to do is figure out the circumference. So I just need to measure. These points, so I do want to turn them into convert to internal shape. There it is. Extend and trim and add point to pattern outline. And then make those convert to curve point. Okay. So now I have that. I could just cheat and just make it <laughs> super wide and be done. 
Um, but now we have to make the actual curve. Which is going to be a little of an interesting shape. So it actually might be easier to start off with, let me just deactivate. Might be easier to start off with the normal heel, so let's go ahead and do that just so it's going straight up and down, which is really easy to do because I can just copy this, paste, unfreeze, and simulate. and then make a matching column for whatever the width of this is. 120, oh wow, that's an even number. Never get that. By 50? Probably not wide enough. superimposed side. Look, it's a beautiful kitten heel. Uh, we are having a problem, as you can see. Let me strengthen this. My seams are trying to curve, so what I should do is use the B hotkey and select all of my seams here and make them turned so that they'll stick down. There we go. Now they have a simulation thickness, which is what's causing this, this little bit of an issue here. But that's fine because it'll end up fixing itself in a bit. So this is definitely not long enough so let's go ahead and make it as long as this guy because it did give us that measurement. Thank you. And again making this five particle distance, not 54, five please. Five particle distance Why are you still rotating? Whatever. And I'm going to freeze that heel base and then make one more, which is 45.8. I didn't measure. My tutorial schedule. I do not have a schedule for you, but we do have tutorials that are available online for free on our on our YouTube channel that you are currently on. Superimpose side. Make this again five particle distance. Oh, if you mean streams, then yeah, like what, what Rosemary has just told you, it's every other week. Generally, it, we might be skipping next week just because, unless I do more shoes, because I did want to do um, like ice skates or something next week, but um, we will be off for the holiday. So here's just an example of the really wide shoe. Let me, again, make these all turned angles. There we go, so it's nice and square. You can see that this is starting to curve down, so I do want to account for that. I'm not using hotkeys right now. going to be splitting, uniform length, split, split, uniform, add point. Mm. 
Oh, okay, good. Yeah, we normally stream every other Wednesday, but during the holidays, we might change it. I might just do more shoes next time. I'm just going to try this. I haven't actually tried this yet, so we're going to find out together. Uh. I'm doing the wrong side. Okay, rotate, please. Thank you. Top, okay. One, two, three. Me, plan stream, also me. Let's do something I haven't tried yet. Not entirely certain it will work. Hold D. But I'd like to see if it does. Okay, cool. Unfold with symmetrical editing. Segment sewing in 3D. Okay. Nope, don't do that. And of course, making sure it's all turned. Well, there we go. There is the start of our heel there. So I could make this heel smaller if I wanted to. And using this shape, I can start... Whoops, where am I? Making sure it's turned. Intensity, thickness. Okay. Now, because this is a thicker material, that's why I'm having this problem happening. But if you play with it enough and you shape it enough, you can easily have this pop out. I do. I personally like to make them really tight seams. Like normally, I wouldn't say to put strain on your material like this, but just because it looks nicer, I like to do it this way. I can always increase my thickness rendering of my heels, or I can also increase the collision thickness. So, like, make it five. Oh, one of these is 20. That's probably why. And it does require a lot of playing around when you're making heels. As you can see, this is a bit cattywampus going towards the back. But now that I've gotten this basic shoe shape, I could, as you can see, I've stretched it down. I've stretched it shorter. So if I wanted to make this a the full heel, I could continue this down to make this into the, yeah, there you go. Give it some space. Okay, are you causing any problems for me? Okay. 
give it some space. I like to make it really tight um, just to get the more tapered heel shape without having to do too much work. I can just continue this straight down and across if I wanted to do that. But we are halfway through and I would like to try making a men's shoe for everybody as well from more of a scratch pattern. Um, so let's, we'll, we'll finish the wedge, we'll finish the wedge. We'll do it, we'll do it for the sake of, I can render it for everyone, I can render it. Um, slicey slice. the length on this 71.1 split at 71.1 okay I'm using the internal line to split it vertically and then I'm gonna merge them together extend and trim to pattern outline Oops, got excited Ctrl C, Ctrl D for making linked pieces. And then I don't want this interior piece anymore, so I am going to delete this. And this one as well. Oops, not that one. This one. And then I am going to sew these together and then merge them. Are you still over there? Merge. And then here I can continue my sewing. Which I think this is the exterior, but we're going to find out. Oh, I did it right. Okay, cool. And in this case, we're going to be making another copy of the heel. Of the sole, I mean. And pop up. By doing this. Control C, Control V. I'm cutting this por bottom portion off. I don't need that toe box. And then I am merging these two. Oh, that's why this looks funky. Smooth curve. I am going to true this up a little bit. Her foot is very odd shaped, but that's fine. This is also going to end up having to be made much smaller. And make all of these turned. And this one needs to be, I'm just gonna make it zero thickness. And then deactivate pattern in sewing, I am going to flatten this out. So I can still see that it's quite large going towards the back of her heel. Like a bit of a collision issue right there. Hopefully that will help fix it. Okay. And now that it's laying flat, I am going to go ahead and freeze this just like the other ones. Reactivate the heel. And, I mean, it looks nice here. I do like making the, I do like messing with the stretch though. Just so it's nice and even more out. I personally like the shape, but that's just <laughs> me. Specifically when it comes out like this, but, um, 
you can kind of sculpt it into the correct correct position. Uh, let me turn that, go back, okay. Just need to make sure that you're not making it too wide. Or too too uh, short, or too tall. Because I could do the same thing, which is just wrap it around and freeze it. But I'm going to go ahead and call this one done. I do like the shape. I like them, I like them swoopy, but that's just me when I'm making shoes. I'm not specifically a shoe designer, but there we go. I just like how it looks. But that is the women's shoe that is done. And I do have another hour. So let's go ahead and try the men's shoe. I'm going to save this though. File. Save as project. Work. Stream files. Ooh, we got to make a new one. Shoes. I guess I have caps lock on. Okay, so file new, delete my avatar. Uh, playing with pulling out spikes. It does look really avant-garde. I really, I really like the playing with the heels because once you get the basic shoe shape, then you can start playing around with it. Um, remove this background image. Oh, I'll just add the men's. Uh, Bob. while we're here. And then I'm going to select a male avatar. Now the male avatars are, like, are when the feet are very flat in your workspace. They're very... Wait, which one am I on? Oh. The feet are very interesting shape. I have too many avatars. Um, yes, start off with our marvelous designer tutorials that are here on our website that I linked in the very beginning of the chat. I will link them at the end of the stream in one hour. Again. Watch all of our beginner tutorials. They are on older user interfaces, but I highly recommend you work with our beginner tutorials. Some I know sometimes it's easy and sometimes you can run before you can walk, but in Marvelous Designer, I highly recommend you you follow the you walk before you run. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing for menswear. I'm gonna change his shoes. And just reminding everyone one more time that um, Marvelous Designer, we do not, you cannot assign shoes and make your custom ZACS files. That is Clo exclusive. Uh, delete these. So you can see his, sh his foot is very flat. He has a very flat foot here. So we do need to remember in Marvelous Designer, if we are accommodating the avatar's shape of their foot, we can't change the shape of their foot. If you were to say make these in another Um, in another software, you could probably change the shape of their foot. Because shoes generally aren't really made to be fitting, but they are made to be <laughs> shaping your foot half the time. So anyway, I went online and I just found a photo of the bottom of a men's shoe. I want my file to pop up. Where is it? Uh, bop, bop, bop. Ah, okay. So we're either going to do a shoe or we're going to do the really fancy slippers that I found for men, for menswear. But I found the bottom of a shoe. I just looked up, um, again, shoe, shoe making, shoe patterns. It's, there's not a lot because shoe making, again, is a whole nother industry. But I did find this photo of this really nice bottom of a shoe. So I'm going to just trace it. And I'm going to have to make sure that it fits my avatar and the shape of his foot. Ah, that's fine. No, this won't ever be perfect. So I am shaping the, yeah, he's going to need some insoles. Yeah, there's a lot of spam bots today. 
Also known as I get a lot, I get to ban a lot of people. I'm just saying, let's work for me later. Okay, there's that shoe portion. And it would be nice if we could... I, I know that a lot of users try to use the shoes. Oh, I forgot. Finish the, finish the heel and then I'll talk about why you can't just use our shoes and trace on top of them. Okay. I know some users have tried this or thought that it would work uh, to just trace on top of the shoes. Um, but unfortunately... Similar with our avatar's toes, our shoes are really um, not the cleanest of mesh. They, they work, but you can see as well, especially on these men's heels, these men's uh, 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 fancy shoes, um, that we still have the laces here. And it's not just a very simplified mesh. It is really, really kind of ugly, but, you know, they're usable. There, um, but you can't really just draw and trace on them. So you can also see here that where it's accommodating his foot, which is nice while we're working, but you can see, especially on his feet, there's a lot of collision that can happen and you can't really just draw on top of this, unlike the normal shoes. Thank you, the Oxfords. I literally own like four Oxfords and I just can't remember these words sometimes. Uh, there it is. We are working on improving this this feature. Um, okay. So I have my shoe. Where is it? And we're going to do the same thing with building that base. But I currently don't have a finish pattern for it. So it's going to be a little bit more, take a little bit longer. I need to flip these horizontally to make it the correct foot or vertically. Heel. I am going to deactivate him just so I don't have to worry. Now he's blue. Da ba dee, da ba die. Okay. So I do want to make sure that this fits his toe box because I'm going to have to make some adjustments if I can't. Which most likely I'm going to have to. Because this shoe clearly is meant to just squish that pinky toe. And depending on time, we might just end up making this into a nice, fancy $100 uh, leather slipper. Which is fine. I know, he's part of the Blue Man Group. For now. And Control H. Okay. Woo. Flies off. Okay. So I am working from the bottom here. So you can see here that it is a much smaller toe box than on the current shoe. I'm, I need to make it just a little bit wider and I don't want to do it. Cause this is such a pretty shoe. Oop. And reset. Okay, okay. Make this a little. And make him leave the blue man group. Just so I can see. Like it almost fits. Like almost. Like we're almost there. I 
think I just need to change like right over the pinky toe. If I just make it a little more, just a little bit more. So with shoes, especially if you don't have a pattern that you know fits a shoe block, and especially because my avatars, I can't change the shape of their feet. I'm having to account for, for this. I also need to, based on how he's standing, also make some adjustments to the heel here. And I'm holding D to make this change, by the way. Because his foot really is warping out. Um, I'm going to move these. Move this. If I can. And again... Still, t still turning it. Oh my goodness. Why are you, st why is he standing like this? I guess that is really, he is really curved. I'm going to have to pull this out if I'm doing it this way. Um, holding D to just move them individually. I'm just going to lose a lot of the shape as well as... I want to remove this shape now. Moving them at the same time. There we go. That's a much nicer shape, sort of. I do want to... Five, zero. There we go. Straight on. Trying to make this as skinny as I can. Oh, and again, making this five particle distance so we can see it. It's gonna have a very small heel as we can see. I'm definitely gonna have to change the heel location as well. We're definitely going to give this a try because I do want it to be thin. Uh, let's see. I just need this. Okay, good. Cut and sew. Merge. Okay, cool. So that's kind of fixing it a little bit. It's not perfect. Spends 15 minutes adjusting a heel. Using the zero hotkey to zoom in on the very bottom. Looking from underneath. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and move on. Because um, I want to. And we're going to see how this works. I do have a basic image of a... So we can either do my... If, my, if, the, if this next shoe doesn't work, this pattern doesn't work out because I haven't tested it. Um, we're going to find out if I'm just going to make uh, some fancy leather slippers, which will be easy-ish, ish. Oh, snap. Uh, add background image. I'll make this 50% and move. Maybe this will work. We're going to see. So this is a Chelsea boot. So this is, I wanted to do a, a kind of a boot shape. So we're going to try this boot pattern here. This is just a diagram for measurements um, from an actual tutorial, which I can share. This isn't perfect, but I will share it in the chat. I believe that's from this, or this is another resource. Eh, it's another resource, but I'll show you the uh, image that that actually is from. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
that's from this. This belongs to that. So this is if I was making like a normal shoe. So I guess we'll we'll swap to that because I gave you guys the resource. Um, and I don't want to give you guys a reference that I'm not going to use. Um, I'm going to try this one instead. But the other one I shared was called a Chelsea boot. Um, and sometimes that, that one might work, but it was a much more difficult diagram. So again, I'm working on the half here. So this is the toe box, this is the upper portion, and then this is going to be the, si the, the side and back for this Oxford shoe. This one does appear to be a basic, a super basic Oxford, but we're going to find out how well this pattern will work for this purpose. Because as always, I'm just shoehorning different patterns together. And I'm ignoring the seam allowance. And then using curve points, I'm applying my, my curve points this way. But with the, uh, with the boot, I can just increase the height. So long as I get the covering around the, the whole shoe, then it makes it a lot easier. But again, if you can find uh, patterning resources of any kind of shoe, it will help. Or if you want to sculpt your, your own custom avatar that won't have a, uh, any toes, you can also do that, and it will make your life easier. Because then you can just build your shoe on top of your avatar. But then at that point, you could just sculpt your shoe entirely on its own. Uh, this is square, so that's going to be a problem. Have a good one, Fredo. Thanks for stopping by. Again, selecting the D key just so I can make it straight. Okay, and then unfolding. Symmetrically linked. Unfold with symmetrical editing. And then this one, I'm not going to do that. So the thing is that these toe boxes, these ones all don't have any ease in them, which is a concern that I have because I can't just accommodate for ease. Okay, that's frozen. I do need to cheat just a bit. So I do need to create that heel before I do anything else. So I am going to unfreeze the heel and then do another partial freeze on just the toe. Is it not? Oh. Partial freeze on most of this. Okay. So right click and freeze. And then I am going to be adding. Okay. First of all, particle distance again needs to be five. I don't know why it keeps doing that or I just keep forgetting. Again, increasing my simulation thickness, and then the textured surface. Slip them together. Strengthen. Bring the opacity back up to 100. And reduce curvature again. And last but not least, I'm going to, we'll do it two ways. I can use pressure, negative 10, to get my shape. And I do want to reduce my avatar skin offset to one, increase friction to one again, just like I did before, now that I'm interacting with it. You could also do this in the way of uh, matching the silhouette of your avatar's foot. But now that it's here, 
I can go ahead and only freeze this tiny little spot and then turn off pressure to zero, simulate, because now that it's here I can kind of pull this down, kind of shape it, and then I'm going to do another partial freeze of the heel. So this is one of the other ways it is a little bit more difficult. Wow, we got a lot of a lot of Russian bots today. And again, I'm just going to go ahead delete that. Freeze this whole thing one more time. Ooh, okay. And then do negative 10. Just let it flatten out, honestly, at this point. Come on. I just want the heel to just... Come on. Don't make me do it the hard way. I mean, I guess I can. Well, so this is the other way to do it. You saw me do it with the flat foot, so I'm just going to keep it with this curved shape. Just for the sake of time, because we only have 30 minutes to go. To get the shape that we're looking for. He's very flat foot. <laughs> very flat. Let's see if these pieces will sew into the toe box. Or into the shoe. Activate. At a point. Split right there. Uh, what? Split. There we go. Let's see if I did it right. I did not. So just like I did before, we're sewing this right into that toe box. It will probably make it easier if I... I did it right the first time. Inside. Okay. This is definitely going to be too big. But that's okay. Oh, maybe it's not. Strengthen. Where am I? Let's find out. Um, and that's the exterior. I definitely have to make this smaller. Oh, I get it. Okay. We'll do split. No, you don't split. Okay. superimposed side. These do overlap, which is why it's doing this. Okay.
Look at that! Surprising it fits. Uh, this does need to have a tongue, I believe. Control C, Control D. Superimpose side. And again, make these five particle distance. Sorry, Discord chat. Or sorry, um, Twitch chat. I am deleting those spam bots, but they are still popping up. So I do want to add pressure to the toe box. Why is this still, th oh. Uh, that's why. Control A, five particle distance. Again, make everything five particle distance. Okay, good. So this has no darts, this has no shaping specifically. So I think I'm going to start cheating it by putting E's in the front. to get us a little bit of a better shape. His big toe is just to the sky. I mean, I could, let's see what happens. This could go bad. Delete freeze region. I could make it longer, but we can see that this actually goes up right here. So I'm going to do... I'm going to un unfreeze this. Well, it's still not activated and then do a partial freeze on everything except for that toe box. So it goes up. You know what actually I'm going to do? I'm going to pin it. Ah. There's a rogue pin. Hold on. Okay. Delete freeze region. I'm just going to split it one second here. Um, I just need to curve this toe box. Cut and sew. Okay, so I do need to do some fixing. So I'm just going to go ahead and deactivate most of these. Uh, deactivate pattern and sewing, shift Q to hide. Unfreeze or and simulate. So something's going on. I'm gonna unfreeze this as well. Okay. So I can go ahead and put pressure on this one. I'm going to pin just this bottom portion. Keep pressure going. And then apply pressure to here. Oh, negative 10. So that it moves this toe box upward. It's going to take a minute, apparently. That's fine, though. Because it does have a curved toe box. And that'll help with the that toe problem. And I am going to make this uh, turn off that. I'm going to make this like really thick if I can. Uh, five. Okay. 
And then I can reactivate this shoe. Because now it's over his toe. It's still causing me a little bit of problems down here that I have to fix. But I can do this now. I uh, need to remove symmetrical editing, add background image reset. And this side is too long. You can see it's got some bubbling. As well as I need to delete it one more time. Uh, act deactivate pattern and sewing. Make sure it is and sewing. Control K. Negative 10. I do need to turn off this pin. I mean, that's fine. I'll just repin it. There we go. Yeah, it's the same trick on the women's high heel, um, but she didn't have the, the toe box coming upwards. But that, that's what was causing the problem. Because this, this immediately fixed it. Okay, now that that's done, now I can do all of these. Control A, Shift Q. Because there's a bit, you can see it's how it's wobbly here. Now I have to fix the sizing. Um, so let's take a look here. Okay, this portion needs to be, this length needs to be reduced, so. Same with this one. Pull it all up. Um, what is happening is because I have those pins in place. Delete all pins. It's causing a bit of an issue. This does happen to me sometimes. You do need to just kind of go back and forth with the shoe to make the adjustments. Um, again, I'm going to have to select them all. Deactivate pattern and sewing. I'm going to hide it. There we go. Holding shift for all of them. Shift Q and then activate and simulate again. There we go a little bit better. It's looking better. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Whatever that was. Um, oh, I forgot some. Activate. Oh, I need to sew the backs together. So the back of the shoes to each other. What did I accidentally sell them to? Oh, I sold them to the... There we go. So this definitely still needs that ease again, so I'm going to go give it back. so I can give his toe box a little bit more poof. I think what I should do is this. I think this is what's giving us a problem as well. And I should just give it an offset. Oops. Right click, offset, pattern outline. Sure, five millimeters. Uh, do I want to do that? So what's happening is that I didn't add the edges. 
There are so many people that really just want to get banned from this stream. So what I should have done was this. I guess I'll do it. Um, Cause that was also giving me a problem with the uh, convert to curve points, uh, merge. And then what I should do is add an offset because this is a leather, heavy leather shoe. Offset is pattern outline, create an internal line. Yes. Then delete all of the sewing relationships. Put them on the interior. Because now I'll have the proper shape. Some people make shoes in MD. We do have a lot of people asking about it, so I did do a stream this time. Oops. Did I do it backwards again? Some people do, some people don't. A lot of the time they like to try to make boots, I would guess. Oops. Only short. Okay. Interior of the shoe. Interior of the shoe. But people do want to know. Oh, I did it again. <sighs> Hate when I do that. <laughs> okay, interior of the shoe. Because it's not facing the same direction it's getting me. Uh, free sewing. Let's just do each each part, okay? <laughs> There's that one, and then that one, okay. Center back, interior of the shoe. Because I've added a lip I need to remember, but I also need to remember all the directions that the shoe is going. Okay. Well, now that it's sewn back into place, I need to fix it again. This is an unexpected. This does happen when you are working like this. And this is where all the finessing does come in when you're basically sculpting shoes in 3D like this. You can sculpt them on your actual avatar, which would probably be a little bit faster, um, but I am using similar techniques to like how someone would make shoes in real life. Why? Why are you doing this? That's cool. Okay. Well, that's just going to be like that, I guess. Um, okay, there it goes. Now I've shaped the shoe again. And now we're reactivating... The rest of the shoe. Okay. I'm just gonna How off is this sewing? Oh. Well, because it makes it fit really nice else everywhere else, doesn't it? 
Okay, okay. You know what? You know what? That's fine. I'm just gonna make this toe box really tiny. Oh no. Not that tiny. Let's give this 50 pressure again. And I'm just going to make this also really thick. There we go. That's looking better. I'm going to give this 10 as well. Freeze that. Uh, give this no pressure. Uh, curved side geometry. Not like not. Like not. And because of the shape of this one, I can probably give it a little bit of the elastic value, similar to what I did for the women's shoe. Not 80, maybe 95. Ah, it's looking more like clown shoes right now. No, nope, we're not going to do that. None. Well, close. Uh, I am going to make this one three. So there would also be a tongue here. Um, what is it men? What does a tongue of the shoe look like? Okay, it would just be square. Ish. Square-ish. I'm not going to do laces just because there's not a lot of time. Uh, let's see. This is a very ugly line, but that's fine. Cut. Make this five particle distance. Uh, rotate x axis. Caddy Wampus, align bottom. There's different ways to do this, but I'm just eyeballing this right now. I'm just currently matching up all of those curved points because then it will fit. the shoe is no longer symmetrical anyway holding D to just make it match up close enough it's really not symmetrical anymore <laughs> that's fine though and bop Superimpose under, where are you at? Oh, it's inside, huh? Freeze? Where's that? Where'd that pattern piece go? Hide avatar. 
Okay. Interesting. Show. Activate. Uh, layer negative one. Now let's just find the shape of the no an Oxford shoe tongue. Don't don't look that up. Um don't don't look up. Don't look that up. Uh trust me. Okay. I'm just gonna do it this way. It's not perfect. Oops. There. And with the base of our shoe here. We do need to do one more thing, which is make that heel. Uh... And you can do this heel in a couple of different ways, but this one I just did layer clone. Uh, making sure my curvature is all still 20. And this one I can just increase the simulation thickness or rendering thickness to like 15. Let's see. Yeah, no. Uh, zero. Uh, render, no, no additional rendering thickness. I will increase. I will do it the correct way. What is the circumference of this? This is 203.3. by 20 please not 250 20 okay uh splits uniform split and then taper it down align middle and then we're going to make this a curve so edit curvature Sorry, smooth curve tool to the edges. Starting off with the top one. No, it's the top one. Superimpose side. F to focus. Again, making this one five particle distance to finish this up. Shouldn't have any. Oh, I need to delete all the sewing relationships. There you go. Now, because it has that simulation thickness, we didn't need to remember that is happening. Okay. Uh, just fall down. And rotate this to be as accurate as possible underneath the shoe. I should not have let it move, but that's on me. Okay. <sighs> Wait, what is the measurement here? Did I do the right one? 
I did not, 218.6. Change length to 18.6 on both. And then align left and align right. Okay. Now, I should be able to segment so I'll just free sew it. Free sew, which direction was this going? I'm just going to redo this one. There we go. Move that forward just a little bit. Strengthen. Again, it's colliding inside of this shoe. That's what that is what is causing this right now. And we're going to do the same with this piece, including these. So 88.4. by 20. I'm most likely going to change 20 to be something else because this needs to match the edge. Come on. I see it. Give it to me on YouTube. Report. Eh user and report okay and then I just need to make this the same height as this and free so And we're almost done with this shoe side. Zero zoom. And last but not least, we're going to segment sew those edges together. Okay. Because of the collision, it's having a bit of a problem, which again is solvable when you export it as an OBJ. Yeah, part oh, is it not particle distance five? Oh, thank you. 54. <laughs> thank you, Rosemary. Uh, they're both five. Okay. It's still colliding because of the thickness here, but that is fine. I'll have to clean it up in a bit. Next time I think I'll just slice this and then sew part of it instead of using the simulation thickness. But with perfect timing, we are done with a super generic fast men's Oxford shoe. Oh yeah, turn seam. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, make sure it's 20. And all of this shoe should be turn seams. There we go. It does help, but it still does have a bit of an issue. But yeah, thank you, Rosemary. <laughs> I sometimes forget because I'm trying to do it quite rushed. You. 
Turned. Okay, good. There we go. All right. And so that is the other shoe. Much better. I was going to say, because this one I don't want turned seams, but the rest, this part I do. I would have to make grommets after this. And then you could do the laces in there if you wanted. But that does finish our shoes for the day. And I did that in the two, in the two hours. So we did have someone asking, I'm going to share the, um, those links again about our beginner tutorials. So I'm going to kind of skip the line with that first and share those beginner tutorial link um, on our YouTube channel. I can't remember who asked, but um, that is where I recommend you start. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to get loud there. And then a link to our Discord channel, which we are having that holiday it can be anything. It's it's a it's a fun little holiday um, contest, but it does have the biggest prize we've had so far, which is great. Um, and I might have to physically sew something for the winner, so I hope someone enters. Um, so that's a link to our Discord channel there, where we are having the uh, winter contest or the um, fairy tales, like winter fairy tales contest. So, you know, think like you could do something involving Krampus, you could do something involving um, any winter like fairy tale lore that you can think of. Uh, as well as, again, this is the Marvelous Designer YouTube channel. So I'm gonna, just going to link that our website there where you can get our software. And I did just link our YouTube tutorials and I'm going to link We're ending the stream. You can watch the stream right now. I can't quickly recap. Um, there's our YouTube channel. And then last but not least, uh, we do have the support link. Um, I highly recommend. I cannot quickly recap for you. Just watch it. I make two shoes. You can follow along while I make the shoes as well. But thank you guys for joining us today. Um, we will probably be skipping next week unless you guys really want me to make um, more shoes because that's the only thing I've really, I've, I've really prepared for is more shoes um, for actually quality content. Um, the, the stream will be posted as soon as I'm done with this. It will be live for everybody on YouTube um, and it'll still be on Twitch for two weeks. But thank you guys for joining us today. I'm going to go get some lunch. Um, thank you, Rosemary, for helping me remember uh, the steps that I tell everyone to do anyway. And I don't listen to myself. So do as I say, not as I do. And thank you guys for joining us. Have a wonderful holiday. And we will see you after the new year.